Good day, learners. It's your accounting teacher, Sir AJ, and welcome back to my channel. For today, we will be talking about another financial accounting topic, and we will be talking about biological assets in accordance with PASS 41. So if you're now ready to learn something new today, then let's start this video. So as what I have mentioned earlier, we will be talking about PASS 41, Agriculture, for today's video. So for this video, we will be talking about three things. Number one, we will talk about the scope of PASS 41 and some key definitions in PASS 41. We will also talk about recognition and measurement of assets that are in accordance with PASS 41. And number three, we will be talking about the presentation and disclosure of these items. So we will start our discussion today with the scope and some key definitions in PASS 41. So PASS 41 applies to number one, biological assets. We will know later ano ang meaning ng biological assets, but please take note here that hindi lahat ng biological assets is under the scope of PASS 41. Better plants is an exception because they are accounted for in accordance with PASS 16, Property, Plant, and Equipment. Number two, PASS 41 will also apply to agricultural produce at the point of harvest. Take note, at the point of harvest. We have talked about this agricultural produce from our previous video in inventory. Kasi after the point of harvest, PASS 2 will already be applied for agricultural produce. So PASS 41 will only be used at the point of harvest. And number 3, PASS 41 is also applied to government grants that are covered by paragraphs 34 and 35. So we will talk about anong mga government grants ito because we also have another standard for government grant which is PAS 20. But we also took note in our past videos that yung PAS 20 ay mag a apply sa mga government grants related to assets that are long-term in nature, yung mga PPE and intangible assets. So ibang government grant yung i-cover ng PAS 41. As to exclusions from the scope, PAS 41 does not apply to the following. Number one, land related to agricultural activity. So yung land kung saan nandoon yung farm or yung, yung iyong agricultural activity will not be under the scope of PAS 41. Kasi for land, of course, PAS 16 will apply. In case it is an investment property, PAS 40 will apply. Number two, Hindi rin ito for bearer plants related to agricultural activity. As what was mentioned in the previous slide, yung bearer plants will be accounted for using um, PAS 16. And number three, hindi rin to kasali ang government grants related to bearer plants. Because since bearer plant is accounted for in accordance with PAS 16, parang PPE, then yung government grants related to bearer plants will also be accounted for just like yung mga government grants related to PPE, which is PAS 20. And finally, hindi rin mag a apply ang PAS 41 sa intangible assets related to agricultural activity because for intangible assets, we have PAS 38. And then now, we will talk about some key definitions from PAS 41. So, how does PAS 41 define biological assets? Biological asset is any living animal or plant. So, nandyan yung mga cow, sheep, um, chicken, yan yung mga living animal. Living plants, yan yung mga trees, yung mga vines, mga crops, etc. No? So, these are all biological assets. Number two is, ano naman yung better plant? So, a better plant is a living plant that, number one, is used in the production or supply of agricultural produce. So, ginagamit siya to produce um, harvested fruits, no? parang mga fruit-bearing trees. Like in the picture here, itong mango tree, this is a bearer plant. 
Number two, it is expected to bear produce for more than one period. So, para siyang long term, no? Para siyang PPE nga talaga. Kasi it will produce you your um, goods. At the same time, it will be used for more than one period. And letter C, it has a remote likelihood of being sold as agricultural produce. Meaning, the tree itself will not be sold as a produce, no? So, you cannot sell the mango tree as the mango tree. So, there is a remote likelihood of being sold as agricultural produce, except for incidental scrap sales. So, the following naman are not better plants. Letter A, plants cultivated to be harvested as agricultural produce. So, yung mga plants na kapag i-harvest mo siya, mawala din yung plant, no? Siguro yung mga cassava, no? yung mga crops, no? Mawawala din yung plant itself. Letter B, plants cultivated to produce agricultural produce when there is more than a remote likelihood that the entity will also harvest and sell the plant as agricultural produce. So kapag you will harvest from the plant pero ibebenta mo rin yung plant as an agricultural produce, then hindi yun better plant. And finally, annual crops. Okay, so ito yung mga siguro palay or yung mga yung mga yearly um mais plantation yung mga ganun okay because they are not more than one period the third definition is on agricultural produce so ano ba tong agricultural produce this are the harvested produce of the entity's biological assets example from the chicken you will harvest eggs no so from the plants you will harvest yung mga fruits or yung mga vegetables. So, etong lahat sila agricultural produce. And then, for agricultural activity, what is an agricultural activity? According to PAS 41, it is the management by an entity of the biological transformation and harvest of biological assets for sale or for conversion into agricultural produce and into additional biological assets. So, for example, nagpapalaki ka ng cow kasi... Um, gusto mo rin magbenta ng mga milk ng agricultural produce or nagpapalaki ka ng for example uh, dogs because gusto mo rin magbenta ng mga puppies no so that's agricultural activity take note that harvesting from unmanaged sources kasi take note that the entity should be able to control the agricultural activity so if the entity cannot control the source for example, ocean fishing and deforestation, they are not considered agricultural activity. So that's it for the scope and key definitions. Now we will talk about recognition and measurement. So in accordance with PAS 41, this is the general recognition criteria for the assets. First, the entity should control the asset as a result of past events. So, ka, dapat na control niya. So, for example, in an ocean fishing, you cannot control the ocean. So, you don't um you don't claim that the fish are your, are your assets. Therefore, in that situation, kapag nag ocean fishing ka, normally, the company obtains rights from the government. So, in that situation, hindi mo consider as asset yung ocean or the fishes they're in, but you only consider as an asset the right to fish or the license, which is ino obtain mo from the government. So yun lang yung asset mo, but the ocean itself is not your asset because wala kang control um, over it. Number two is that it is probable that future economic benefits associated with the asset will flow to the entity. And number three, the fair value or the cost of the asset can be measured reliably. So that's very um, simple, no? very generic, yung recognition criteria. As to measurement, um, we will separate the biological assets from the agricultural produce. So we will first discuss biological assets. First, for biological asset, they are measured initially at fair value less cost to sell. So take note, fair value less cost to sell. Subsequently, they are also measured at fair value less cost to sell. And kapag hindi mo naman ma-measure ang fair value reliably, then PAS 41 allows us to measure biological assets at cost 
less any accumulated depreciation and any accumulated impairment losses. If you observe, this is familiar kasi para siyang PPE, right? So, kapag hindi natin ma-measure ang fair value ng biological asset, this is an alternative measurement. But, if you can measure reliably the fair value, then the measurement should be fair value less cost to sell. As to agricultural produce naman, initially, you measure it at fair value less cost to sell at the point of harvest in accordance with PAS 41. Kasi ba diba sabi natin, at the point of harvest, what should govern is PAS 41. So sabi ni PAS 41, ang measurement niya ay fair value less cost to sell at the point of harvest. Pero after harvest, subsequently, we use PAS 2 already. Yun na yung mag-govern na standard. And we have discussed in the previous video that for agricultural produce after the point of harvest, the measurement is net realizable value depending on the industry practices. So, nakasabi yun sa previous video natin. And any point of sale cost, ito yung mga nag-i-include doon. No? Brokers and dealers commissions, any levies by regulatory authorities and commodity exchanges, and any transfer taxes and duties. But they exclude transport and other costs necessary to get the assets to a market. So, take note of that. For gains and losses, kapag nagbabago ang fair value less cost to sell, we record gain or loss on changes in fair value less cost to sell. Number two, we also recognize gain or loss on initial recognition of agricultural produce. Of course, kapag nag-harvest ka, you did not um, incur cost, hindi ka nag-outflow ng cash. So, kapag nag-debit ka ng asset for the agricultural produce, ang credit mo is not cash kasi wala ka namang nilabas na pera. But, this is your credit. Gain on initial recognition of agricultural produce. In the same way, kunwari nanganak yung iyong biological asset at nag-produce ng another biological asset. For example, chicken. Tapos nanganak sila, no? So, meron tayong din gain or loss on initial recognition of biological asset. So, take note, if your purpose is to harvest it and sell the harvested produce, then agricultural produce siya. Pero ang purpose mo is if nanganak yung animal, tapos yung anak niya is meant to be a biological asset as well kasi um, papalikin mo at mga anak din, then gain or loss on initial recognition of biological asset ang i-recognize mo. And then, for gain or loss on changes in fair value less cost to sell, hindi siya required but it is encouraged to separate the changes in fair value ng dalawa. Number one, due to price change. This is the formula. The fair value less cost to sell at the end of the year pero gamit yung age niya as of the beginning, minus the fair value less cost to sell um, at the beginning, considering yung age niya at the beginning. So take note, kapag due to price change, yung age niya um, similar, yung beginning age. Ang nagbabago is yung fair value less cost to sell. Kasi nga, due to price change. Yung letter B is due to physical change. The formula is fair value less cost to sell at the end, but considering yung age niya at the end as well. Minus fair value less cost to sell niya at the end, considering yung age niya nung beginning. So take note that in this formula, yung fair value less cost to sell is both at the end of the year, kasi hindi natin kinoconsider yung price change, but ang magpagkakaiba is yung isa, considering the age as of the end of the year, and yung isa considering the age as of the beginning of the year. That's why it's due to physical change. So that's it for measurement. We will now practice and apply what we learned. So ABC Company has a herd of 100 two-year-old animals on January 1, 2019. Ten animals aged uh, 2.5 years were purchased on July 1, 2019 for 10,800 each. And 10 animals were born on July 1, 2019. No animals were sold or disposed of during the year. The fair values less cost to sell per unit were 
2-year-old animal on January, 10,000. 2.5-year-old animal on July, 10,800. Newborn animal on July, 7,000. 2-year-old animal on December 31, 10,500. 2.5-year-old animal on December 31, 11,100. Newborn animal on December 31, 7,200. 3-year-old animal on December 31, 12,000. And 0.5-year-old animal on December 31, 8,000. So, to answer the problem, we will first take a look at ilan yung animals as of January 1, 2019. So, as of January 1, meron tayong 100 na 2-year-olds. So, each 2-year-old animal costs 10,000. And since there are 100, so 10,000 pesos times 100 animals, that's a total biological asset of 1 million pesos. So, ano yung mga journal entries natin? On July 1, 2019, ba first, bumili tayo ng 2.5-year-old animal. So, the entry is debit, biological asset, sampu yung binili natin. And each 2.5-year-old is at 10,800, so that's a total of 108,000. And credit cash, kasi binili naman natin, 108,000. That is to record purchase of 10 2.5-year-old animals. Also on July 1, nanganak, no? There were newborn animals. So, debit biological asset. Each newborn animal at July 1 is 7,000. So, times 10, that's 70,000. But since newborn to, hindi naman tayo nag-outlay ng cash. So, the credit is gain from initial recognition of biological asset at 70,000 pesos. That is to record initial recognition of 10 newborn animals. So, yun yung mga entries natin on July 1. The question first is, what is the carrying amount of the biological assets on December 31? So, we need to account ano-anong mga assets tayo meron. Una, meron tayong 100, pero 3-year-old na sila ngayon. Kasi 2 years old sila nung January 1. So, 1 year na yung nagdaan, they are 3-year-olds now. And each 3-year-old animal on December 31 is worth 12,000 each. So that's 12,000 times 100, that would be 1,200,000 pesos. Next, meron tayong 10 animals na binili natin nung July. Nung July, 2.5 sila. So half year na yung nagdaan, 3-year-old na rin sila ngayon. So since 3-year-old animals on December 31 is worth 12,000 times 10, that's 120,000. Pangatlo, may sampung newborn nung July. So, since half year na yung nagdaan, 0.5 years old na sila ngayon. So, 10.5 year old animals born on July, um, each 0.5 year old animal is worth 8,000 pesos. So, that's times 10, that's 80,000. So, ang total carrying amount natin on December 31, 2019 is 1,400,000 pesos. The second question is, what is the gain from change in fair value that should be reported for 2019? Yung 100 animals existing on January 1, initially, they are at 1 million, ba? Pinakita ko kanina, kasi 10,000 sila nung January 1, times 100, that's 1 million. But nung December 31, since naging 3 years old na sila, yung fair value na nila ay 1 million, 200,000 pesos. So, that's a gain of 200,000. For the 10 animals you purchased in July, nung July, they are 10,800 each. So, that's a total of 108,000. Pero nung December 31, 3 years old na rin sila. So, that's 12,000 each times 10, 120,000. So, for that um, transaction, meron tayong gain of 12,000. Finally, yung mga newborn, Nung, nung July, they were newborn, worth 7,000 each, a total of 70,000. Pero yung fair value nila nung December 31, 8,000 na for a total of 80,000. We have a gain of 10,000 pesos. So ang total gain natin from changes in fair value is 222,000 pesos. How do we record that um, change in fair value? The entry is debit, biological asset, kasi dagdag yan sa... 
um, amount ng biological asset, di ba? From from the initial measurement, which is 1,108,000 and 70,000, dadagdagan mo ng 222,000 para maging 1,400,000. And credit gain on changes in fair value, 222,000 pesos. So, that's it for the recognition and measurement of biological asset and agricultural produce. Take note that their measurement is fair value less cost to sell. So, number three is government grant. Anong government grant ba yung pinag-uusapan dito sa past 41? So, for government grants, what will apply sa past 41 is number one, yung government grants related to biological assets measured at fair value less cost to sell. Take note, di ba yung mga biological asset, if the fair value cannot be measured reliably, meron tayong alternative na cost less accumulated depreciation and accumulated impairment losses. Yung kasali lang po sa past 41 ay kapag ang biological asset ay measured at fair value less cost to sell. Kasi, Yung mga iba, past 20 na ang mag a -apply. So, ano-anong mag a -apply pag past 20? Number 1, yung mga biological assets measured at cost less any accumulated depreciation and impairment losses. Kasi, para silang PPE, correct? Diba ito yung measurement ng PPE? And grants related to PPE are governed by past 20. So, ganun din dito. If your biological asset is measured at cost, then past 20 will apply kapag merong government grant. At number 2, yung mga government grants related to better plants. We have talked about kanina, better plant is measured in accordance or governed by past 16 PPE. So ang government grant related to better plant, past 20 din ang mag apply just like PPE. So according sa past 41, this is how you will account for government grants. Related to biological asset measured at fair value less cost to sell. There are three types of grants. First, yung mga unconditional government grant. For this case, walang condition attached. So, the grant is given to you by the government and then wala ka nang kailangan i-fulfill na condition. So, in this situation, you will recognize income when the grant becomes receivable. So, automatic income na yan. Number two is yung mga conditional government grant. Ibig sabihin, my conditions attached to the grant. So, you have to fulfill the condition first before your grant will become uh, received. So, in this situation, you recognize income only when the conditions of the grant are met. Kasi kapag conditional at hindi mo na-fulfill ang condition, ibabalik mo yung binigay sa yung grant. So, you will only recognize the income kapag na-meet mo na yung conditions. Meron tayong panghuli, which is yung mga conditional government grant, pero merong piecemeal satisfaction. Ibig sabihin, kapag hindi mo na-meet ang condition, hindi mo ibabalik lahat. But, ibabalik mo lang yung portion when hindi mo na-meet yung condition. So, meron tayong piecemeal satisfaction. In this situation, you will recognize income proportionately. Yung mga na-meet mo na proportionately, i-recognize mo na as income or using the straight line method. So, para mas klaro, we will have an example. So, Entity X owns cotton plantations which contain a large number of cotton plants. The cotton plants are biological assets and are measured at fair value less cost to sell. So, pwede natin gamitin ang past 41 because um, sila ay biological asset and measured at fair value less cost to sell. Hindi rin siya better plan. On January 1, 2019, a government grant of 2 million for the cotton plant becomes receivable. The grant is paid to X on the same date. So, the question is, how much income from the government grant should be recognized for the years 2019 and 2020 in the given independent situations? Situation number one, the government grant is unconditional. So, kapag unconditional yung government grant in 2019, we can already recognize as income yung 2 million pesos. So, your entry there upon Receipt of the grant is debit cash, 2 million, at credit income from government grant, 2 million, kasi unconditional. So, ibig sabihin, for 2020, wala ka nang i-recognize na income kasi 
ni-recognize mo na lahat nung 2019. Since the grant is unconditional, income is recognized immediately in the period the grant becomes receivable. Letter B, situation. The government grant is subject to the condition that X operates the cotton plantations at least until December 31, 2020. If this condition is not met, the whole grant of 2 million has to be paid back. Take note of the sentence, if this condition is not met, the whole grant of 2 million has to be paid back. Ibig sabihin ng sentence na to is, it's either you meet the condition or not. So, hindi po to capable of piecemeal. Kasi pag hindi mo inoperate yung cotton plantation until December 31, 2020, ibabalik mo lahat. So, in this situation, Sa 2019, wala ka pang recognize na income because kailangan mo pa imit ang condition. Pero on 2020, kapag December 31 na, you can already recognize the income 2 million pesos. Walang piecemeal. It's either mamit mo ang condition or hindi. Since the grant is conditional, income is recognized only when the conditions are met. For situation letter C, Payment of government grant is subject to the condition that X operates the cotton plantation at least until December 31, 2020. If this condition is not met, the terms of the grant allow part of it to be retained according to the time that has elapsed. So, take note of this sentence. Kapag hindi mo na meet yung condition, hindi mo ibabalik lahat. Only to the time na hindi pa nag e elapse So, yung time na nag e elapse na, pwede mo nang ikip yon. So, in this situation, piecemeal satisfaction is allowed or piecemeal satisfaction is possible. So, meaning, pwede rin piecemeal yung pag-recognize ng income. So, for 2019, dahil 2019 and 2020 to 2 years, so yung 2 million, ipi-piecemeal satisfy natin. So, for 2019, ang income mo ay 1 million, and for 2020, if na mo yung condition, again, another 1 million. You can recognize income on a piecemeal basis since the entity can retain a part of the grant. So that's it for government grants in accordance with PAS 41. If you ask me, sir, paano yung government grant in accordance with PAS 20? Then we have a separate video for that. Please check my channel. We have a discussion for government grants kapag PAS 20 naman yung mag -a apply So, the last topic for this video lecture is yung presentation and disclosure. So, the first is for presentation. Biological assets are aggregated and presented as one-line item under the heading biological assets and they are classified as non-current assets. For agricultural produce, after the point of harvest, they are presented under inventories and classified as current assets. For gain or loss naman, fair value less cost to sell of agricultural produce on initial recognition is separately presented from gains or losses on changes in fair value of biological asset on the face of the income statement. For disclosures, these are the things that you need to disclose, carrying amount of the biological assets, description ng mga biological assets, Changes in fair value during the period, there can be physical change and there can be price change. Disclosure of these two is encouraged but not required. Fair value of agricultural produce harvested during the period. And description of the nature of enterprises activities. Information about biological assets that are pledged. Commitments for development or acquisition of biological assets, financial risk management strategies, and methods and assumptions for determining fair value. And finally, reconciliation of changes in the carrying amount of biological assets. So that would be all for this lecture on Pass 41 Agriculture. So now, it's your time to test your knowledge. So again, if you know the answers to these questions, please comment down below the answers. No, um, you, you can explain paano nyo nakuha yung sagot so that I can comment kung tama yung naging process of thinking ninyo. So for question number one, 
Which of the following is not a biological asset that is accounted for under Pass 41? Agriculture. A. Animals that are being grown to be butchered for their meat. B. Animals held to produce milk. C. Plants grown to produce fruit over a long period of time. Or D. Plants grown to be harvested and sold. And question number two. Maraya Company is in a business of deer farming. A herd of 100 deer is held throughout the financial year of 2019. The only change during the year is the increase in their physical attributes due to aging from 2 to 3 years. The relevant data are as follows. Fair value of a 2-year-old deer at January 1, 3,000. Fair value of a 2-year-old deer at December 31, 3,300. Fair value of a 3-year-old deer at December 31, 4,800. How much is the increase in the fair value of the biological asset during the year? A. 30,000 B. 150,000 C. 180,000 Or D. 480,000 Again, if you know the answer, Comment your answer down below. So that would be all for this video, guys. Thank you very much for listening and for watching. I hope that you learned something today about Pass 41. If you have questions, you may contact me at my social media accounts on Facebook, on Twitter, and on this YouTube channel. Please like, comment, and share this video para mas marami ang matuto during this pandemic, especially that we are all experiencing online classes. So I hope nakakatulong yung mga videos natin para mas maintindihan nyo ang financial accounting. Also, if nakakalimutan nyo, pag hindi pa kayo nakakasubscribe, please do subscribe to my channel and share this channel to your friends, to your classmates para makasubscribe na rin sila. Also, hit the notification bell para ma-notify ka if I have a new video. So, that would be all for today, guys. Always remember that every day is an opportunity to learn something new. So, that would be all. Thank you very much and I'll see you on my next video. Bye!